Hello and welcome to the pitch. It is Marlon doing the hosting today, and I've got Sava back with me. It is episode two, three, not two, three, two. It's three before I get it all wrong. Episode three of the pitch and the daily, daily content that we are bringing to you each day. Sava, before I introduce and make sure, I hope you're well since Monday's episode. All things are good. Yeah, mate. Yeah, all good. Just working, working hard. Um, and watching all the Euros. So, yeah, just, just, <laughs> just enjoying life. Enjoying life. Look, let's get straight into this, right? So, the fixtures were obviously released yesterday, yeah. right? And there'll be a lot of teams looking at it going, oh, here we go again. Oh, like, let, let's take Ipswich for talking purposes. Liverpool yeah. and Manchester City on the first two games, they couldn't have wished for anything better. Liverpool at home, Man City next. Get the two toughest games out of the way and then start the season well. But yeah. what I wanted to look at, right, with you, because obviously you you said last season who the title was going to go to, who was going to be in the title race, and yeah. I'm going <coughs> to whisper this quietly, you were quietly right, <laughs> right? So looking at everything that's gone on in the last 24 hours, who do you think will be most happy, especially with the running worth of fixtures? So obviously, right, I want to talk about Arsenal first, right? And yeah. the reason I want to talk about Arsenal first is because they're opening fixtures in away games hasn't been very, very generous to them. And they actually get a lot of their hard fixtures out the way when you look at their running. So they've got Villa away, Tottenham away, Manchester City away, and that's their first three away games, right? right. But they've got Wolves yeah. at home, Brighton at home, um, and they've also got Leicester at home. Right. How are Arsenal fans feeling about that? Because last year they, they did start slow. Even though they didn't lose, they drew some games where they probably should have won. Yeah, I, I think, look, it, it's always difficult when we talk about fixtures and, um, you know, uh, we talked in the WhatsApp group yesterday. I love it. People look at their fixtures and they go, oh, my God, this is this is a set of fixtures that could see us winning the title. This is a fi- set of fixtures that could see us getting relegated. Look, the way I've always looked at it is you've got to play everyone twice anyway. Of course, yeah. But for the purposes of, of uh, Arsenal, let's talk about Arsenal, there'll be two ways of looking at this. One, yeah, we're getting those three really difficult away games out of the way. Tottenham yeah. away, say difficult, they didn't find it that, that difficult in the last <laughs> two seasons, but Tottenham away, Villa away, who are notoriously very good at, at Villa Park, and and um, what, Man City, Man that City, Manchester City, City team yeah. that don't lose games at home. <laughs> so you could look at it that they're getting out of the way, but you could also look at it, and this is why I don't think it always matters, is you could look at it that Man City, Villa, Tottenham, whoever – Three to six games in, you're not in your stride. No one's got yeah. four. Um, so when people say the first game of the season is away at so-and-so, yeah, on paper it can be hard, but that team hasn't played either. They've got no match fitness. They've got no form. Their new players are settling in as well. So I think it can be the the reason why I don't think it matters too much in the grand scheme of things. I think it can be a blessing and it can be a curse. Um yeah. Would Arsenal have wanted different away games? I mean, yeah. Look, look at those three home games. If you're our, if you're Arteta, you are saying the three home games have to be nine points. What was it? Brighton, Leicester, and Wolves. So, yeah, Wolves, Brighton, and Leicester. Yeah, they're three first home games. Got to be three, three, three home games. <laughs> win one of the three minimum. Win win one and draw one of the three away games, knowing that you might lose to Villa, you might lose to to City, whatever, or whoever, uh, Tottenham was the other one. Come out of that, 10 to 12 points, you're happy with that, with that start, and then you know for the rest of the season, your hardest away games don't include your rivals, yeah, your rivals for the title, City and Villa, who are notoriously good at Villa Park. So it can work both ways, a really political politicians answer there, Marlon, but <laughs> I think they'll be quietly happy with it at that stage because City take time to get going. Look, I've included Liverpool in this conversation. The only reason why I've included Liverpool in this conversation is because, look, Slot's pretty much got the same squad, right? Yeah. And I'm only including them because I'm, I'm, look, I'm just expecting right now for there not to be a drop-off, right? Yeah. And for Liverpool, they open, obviously, they open against Ipswich, as I mentioned earlier. They got Brentford. Then they played a big one against Manchester United away. And then they got Forest, Bournemouth, and Wolverhampton. If you're yeah. honest, not, are you looking at going, actually, as, if Man United are, are Man United of last season, are you looking at going, I'll, I'll be happy with that? Look, even if you're Arnie Slot, and again, you've got to take into account he's new yep. to the league, his, his tactics are going to be very different from Jurgen Klopp's. 
they'll sign a few players that will probably, I, I'm guessing, I'm just guessing they'll sign a few yep. players from the Dutch league that will take a bit of time to bed in. But let's be fair. If you, if you were them, take out Man United, because again, they're the anomaly. You, yep. They're either really good or really bad, right? But those other five fixtures... If you're on his slot, you're looking and yeah. thinking that's got to be 12 to 15 points out of those five games. So, look, I think he'll be very, very happy with that. And again, what I was saying for swings and roundabouts, it means that he can use those first five, six games to get his team into some sort of form, learning his way of his style of play, the patterns he wants to play. Yeah. So by the time they get to the harder, the, the harder games, they're, they're well drilled in what Arnie's slot uh, you know um, what Arnie slot football looks like. So yeah. I think I think Liverpool of all the clubs will be um, very very happy with that set of six. Works the other way. If they <laughs> are bad, if they, if they go, mm. if they win one of those six, the, the knives are going to be out for Arnie slot already. So it works both ways. But I, I think they'll be very happy. So what I really wanted to get into, because I saw a lot of Arsenal fans yesterday on social media, right, going, actually looking at the, the running, the running is the most important part to all these teams now, right? Because, yeah. yeah, they can open up the first six, but they can start establishing themselves. But once we start getting to that nitty gritty end of the season, you start looking at the teams that Liverpool have got. You start looking at what Man City have got. And I saw a lot of Arsenal fans saying, look, the fixtures have been favourable to us for the last six games. But they've also been favourable to see. So we need to make sure that we're in yeah. front by that moment. Now, Arsenal's last six games are Ipswich Palace, Bournemouth, Liverpool, Newcastle and Southampton. So Liverpool possibly could be the only anomaly in that yeah. for them. Yeah, you'd, right? you'd, you'd be happy with that if you were Arsenal. You'd be happy with that. Yeah, where Manchester City, right, and this is Manchester City who like to, like, literally pulverise teams towards the end of the season. I've yeah. got Everton, Villa, Wolves, Southampton, Bournemouth and Fulham as their last six games. <laughs> yeah, I, I, think the, I think the thing is with, with Man City, um, and I, I know I'll get called a Man City fan for saying this, but I say it every year. The pattern is there every year with Man City. They come into their peak from January, February time. And they, they put up a stat a few uh, uh, towards the end of the last season of Man City from February to the end of seasons for the last five, six years. And it was like, they, they don't really lose games. Yes, so yeah. Man City are scary at the back end of the season, no matter who they play. Having heard that six games, you play, <laughs> um, Man City will say, okay, that's, that's six from six, right? Now look, yeah. it's easy for us to say that in June, of but, course, of course, but this is why we're reviewing it now. Like when we get to yeah. September and October and the season kicks off, and we start seeing teams in their stride. Obviously, we're going to change our opinions. Yeah, but absolutely. right now, when we're based it on last season, what managers have got slot coming? You know, there's different anomalies here yeah, because there's gonna there's there's gonna be a surprise somewhere in this. Um, yeah, and there's gonna be injuries and look, yeah. you know, there's gonna be injuries, lack of form, um, uh, Man City's point deduction, all of this sort of stuff. <laughs> that, that, look. All of this could be complete baloney that we talk about now. <laughs> if, the, if the FA turn around and go, there's a 20-point deduction for yeah. Man City, none of this matters. <laughs> Does it? None of this matters. But, well, we say that, but they can still probably go the whole season on feet and win the league and have 20 points off. It, it wouldn't surprise me. But yeah, look, I, I think what you've got there is Arsenal and City, both of them would bite your hand off for those last six fixtures. So, yeah, because yeah, be because I compare it to Liverpool, right? And this is talking as if you know the teams in this are going to be doing well. But okay, they start off with Leicester, then they play us, which we'll talk about next. Yeah. Then Chelsea, then Arsenal, then Brighton and Palace. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you look at it between Tottenham and Ars Tottenham, Chelsea and Arsenal, it's kind of the, the run we had last year, where we had three tough games in yeah. literally a space of three weeks, and then we threw Chelsea into it because of the game that was rearranged. But for Liverpool, you know, they've only got the uh, they've got us and Arsenal at home, right? But it still could be, you know, you know, we don't know how Liverpool are going to do this year. So yeah. that's probably for them. That's probably a tough little running for them if they're going for the title. Yeah, it is, and I, I think the key thing to look at as well is if we go to the first six games of the season, yeah. nobody's playing for anything as such. You know, it's just mm -hmm. the league's just started. The back six games, 
teams are doing one of three things, right? Teams are either fighting to avoid relegation, they're fighting to get into Europe, or they're fighting for the title. Now, what Liverpool will be hoping is that some of those teams, and I think you mentioned like um, maybe Brighton and Wolves, maybe in that six, I think Brighton. Yeah, and, Bright, Brighton well, and Palace are the last two. And then yeah, well, you could take, we'll take Palace from last season. You would have not wanted them in the last six games. <laughs> so true. But what you what what you want if you're a manager is you want the likes of Brighton and Palace in those last six games to be yeah. mid table comfortably. Yeah. Not worried about relegation battles, not not involved in European battles. That's what you want, right? Yeah. Um but look, I, I, I think that Liverpool again, can they get their points at the beginning of the season? If Liverpool win their first six games, right, which they could, we don't, we don't, we don't we, know what no, we don't yeah. know what we don't <laughs> know what a Liverpool under Arnie slot looks like. Yeah. If Liverpool come out and rattle off six wins from six and get eighteen points, you put yourself in a title race purely because they're Liverpool, purely because you get momentum, purely because uh, purely because you've got the points on the board, and they're Liverpool. And let's be honest, as much as they've lost Cop. So far, as far as I'm aware, Van Dyke staying. Yeah. Salah, as far as I'm aware, is staying. Yeah. They signed all of their midfield was only signed last summer, so they've had an extra year under their belt. All the youngsters have got another year in them. Yes. You know, Gakpo's yeah. Gak a year older. Yeah. You know, um, I, I I think they're gonna I think they're gonna do well. I think all of this they're gonna have a massive drop off because Klopp left. I I don't think that's gonna happen. And this is where, no, no, and I, I am going to agree with you there because I think a lot of people are looking at, you know, looking at a Fergie and Wenger as a prime example. But if you yeah. look at the teams that Wenger, that Wenger and Fergie left the next manager, Bang they on. were aging, they weren't known, none of them were new. Um, and like you said, I completely, and I can't even disagree with you. I want to, but I can't even disagree because actually he's left Arnie's slot in a great position. The only two problems, and it's not even an issue, is... Van Dijk is obviously a year older and he's yep. getting beyond these years. And Salah, is his head going to be turned because he wants more money elsewhere or is he going to give Liverpool one more year, right? Yeah. So, they're, they're, and, and exactly. the fact those two, if they're the worst two things that you have to worry about, I'm sorry, I'm looking at that, going to that. Arnie Slot has no excuses for me. It, 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 exactly. And I think I think the key thing is, if I'm Arnie Slot, uh, yeah. and I'm, I'm sure these conversations would have already taken place, I'm saying to Virgil van Dijk and, and, and Salah, if you do want to give give me one year, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just give me one year. That gives me a year to come in, build, and then I can start this window and the January window. Start getting in your replacements, yeah, right, and start learning from you. That's what I would do. Um, if they keep both of them, you're keeping your. Let's be fair, you're keeping your best two players, you right? Are. Yeah. Um, Trent Alexander Arnold's not going anywhere. It'll be interesting to see what you get. What, the, what I'm sure we'll talk about it later. Yeah. This whole yeah. back midfield nonsense, but I, I think Arnie Slots walked into a very nice position. They're not yeah. one. They're not one of the biggest two in the league at the moment. So for me, he doesn't walk in, and I don't think the Liverpool fans will expect a title in year one. No. So yeah. I think he's come in at a great time. I, I think great. he's a very. I'm with lovely, you on that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's calculated. You think he could have come to us uh, yeah. for anyone watching Spurs? He could have come to Spurs last year. I think the year wait to take over Liverpool is. Uh, <laughs> he's the right he's, he's, no, he's definitely lucked out there, especially with the Liverpool signing. Because obviously, everyone said to Klopp last year, mid, mid, midfield, midfield, midfield. Klopp yeah. went and got those midfielders, and like you said, they're a year on. Yeah. Let's you know, Arnie Slot's in a very, very privileged position, right, compared to what yeah. other managers have to take over. So. Yeah. He's in a he's in a wonderful position as well because look at those Liverpool youngsters. Oh, yeah. Look how much game time they've had this year. Six or seven or eight or whatever it was, youngsters played in that cup final. Right. Yeah. So he's coming into a very strong first team squad and a lot of very good young players that are coming through. So for me, Arnie Slot, I'm, I'm not saying has to win the league in, in, no, in no, no, no. year one. But for me, Champions League should be nailed. That that has to be the, that's the remit. It has to be Champions yeah. League and go for some cups. But yeah. I, I think Liverpool. Uh, I think that I think they're fine. All, all of this, they're going to have this massive drop off. Drop off. Yeah. I think that's hope from rival fans, that, yeah. rather than reality. Because obviously, what we've seen before, but the pro, like 
and like I said earlier, Wenger and Ferguson were completely different. And you saw the squad, and you just looked at the squads and went, he's not left them in a great position, um, especially yeah. Fergie. Fergie kind of just left Moyes and threw him under the bus if we looked at it. Van Persie was like, on his, Van Persie was like hitting 30. Yeah. Van Yang was really late on. Lacazette weren't really scoring. So you kind of sit sit there. But if you look, the only thing that I think Arnie Slot's going to have to really get out of it is Darwin Nunes. Great player off the ball, just yeah. can't score. And that's probably where we're sitting with him. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think that whoever took over the Liverpool job, and this is a wonderful problem to have, um, is what do you do with those five forwards? You know, you keep them, he keeps them all happy, or Klopp's kept them all happy, but what's going to be your front three? But look, at the end of the day, I know people talk a lot about Darwin Nunes and doesn't score that many. His, his goals to games ratio isn't the worst. No. And I think what allows that to happen is Yotta gets goals. Yeah. Akpo gets goals. Salah gets goals. Diaz gets goals. Trent Alexander Arnold gets goals. McAllister gets goals. So I don't I don't think this is a I think this is more an issue for fans yeah. than it is for the manager. And, and fans see the, the the 80 million signing and say, oh my God, he must score 40 a season. When you're rotating the way Liverpool do with their forwards, I don't know his stats. I haven't got them in front of me, but I'm guessing he scored a fair few and got a fair few assists across the last yeah. two years. No, I think he has, and I think for, I think he reminds me a lot of what Firmino used to bring to Liverpool. A lot of people used to moan at Liverpool for the Firmino. He didn't score enough goals, but he used to score in the most important games for them. And because of what he was doing for Mane and Salah, it didn't matter how many he scored. Like you said, the goals were coming from elsewhere. <laughs> I think I think if you look at 2024 football, a lot of people just look at stats. And stat, don't get me wrong, stats have a place to play in football. But I, listen, I, I think we're of a similar age, Marlon. I, I, yeah. I think I'm a bit older, maybe. I don't know. Um, but by you. <laughs> I, I think stats have a place. Yeah. But I don't think they should form the entire argument. And for me, when I watch Liverpool with Darwin Nunes, it's the bullying tactics up front. He'll, he'll go and get stuck in with centre-halves. He can run the channel. He's selfless. He'll keep going. And I think sometimes a, a bloke like that, you can't take away those assets. Yes, they'll, of course, want him to score more. But I, I, I don't think that I don't think it's as big an issue as everyone says it is. But that, that's just me. That's just me. So... Look, you're a Spurs fan. I'm a Spurs fan. We have to talk about Spurs and the opening fixtures and a lot of what we saw online yesterday. Now, oh, fi- f- for me, the fixtures have been very kind to Spurs this year, right? Have been kind in the sense of, when I say kind, we'll play a hard team, but then we'll have one or two between that that are probably more favourable fixtures in, in a Spurs way. So it's not like we like the back end of last season where we had the, the Manchester City, Liverpool and Arsenal in a row. We're not getting that. Right, yeah. but when you saw the fixtures yesterday, are you in the same mindset? Is that actually and and doesn't have an excuse this year? There's no in between. There's no. There's no. Oh my god, you've got a bad run going. If he has a bad run in certain in certain periods of this season, it's not going to look very good on him because of the way the fixtures are falling. <coughs> look, um, look. I. <laughs> it's always. <laughs> Uh, it's always easier to talk about other clubs. It's always yeah. easier. To talk about other clubs. <laughs> I wanted to make you feel comfortable first. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. the moment I talk about Tottenham, what I'm going to get is like I did yesterday. I don't know if you've seen the comment section. I'm t- I, I'm I'm seen them. Mr. <laughs> Negative's back, and I'm like, I, I don't get it. I, I got my predictions right, and I'm still negative. Anyway, look for me. I, I look the fixtures. Uh, as I said to you earlier, for me, I don't look at the fixtures and think anything about Tottenham season. I don't look at the fixtures and think. This is good for Postacoglu. This is bad for Postacoglu. This is easier. This is harder. I don't look at that. What I look at is who are we signing? Yeah. Right? I, 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 I'm sorry. I know you asked about fixtures, but for me, <laughs> we, we could talk about fixtures all day long, about these, these four matches in a row, the first six, the last six. If you don't improve your squad, none of it really means anything. Right? And I'll say this. Last year was a phenomenal start. What, eight wins from 10? Yeah. Right? The law of averages tell you, that just the law of averages tell you that you're not going to get that again. So it kind of makes it really difficult to discuss our first 10 fixtures, our first six fixtures, 
I think it will be the same Spurs. I think it's going to be win a couple, lose a couple, draw a couple. You know, if you can get five wins from the first 10, maybe six, and a couple of draws, a couple of defeats, you'd be happy with it. But Marlon, I hate to be that doom and gloom guy, but this is, I've now got to a point where I'm, I'm, I'm unapologetic for it. This goes back to, I don't know how long you've seen me stream or we've talked for Marlon or whatever, but I say this every year. Nothing's changed for me. Unless you go out and buy quality footballers, it doesn't matter what your last six games are, what your first six games are, what your December, Christmas, January period looks like. If you don't have the quality and you don't have the depth, none of it really matters. You're going to win some, you're going to lose some, you're going to draw some. And unfortunately, that is where Tottenham are at the moment. It's a good squad. <laughs> it's a good squad, but it's but it's it's not a squad that in any way, shape, or form, anytime soon, is ready to talk. Uh, oh, sorry, ready to, to to match up with Arsenal and Man City and Liverpool. Yeah. So, for me, the fixtures are a little bit irrelevant unless we start seeing. And I'm not talking about one. I'm not talking about one, Mark. I'm not talking about Spurs go and sign Eze and we go, there you go, he's back the manager. No, no, no. I'm talking about let's go and sign three or four players at an Eze level. Let's go and sign three or four first team players that that whether it's me, you, whether it's you and Alistair Gold, whether it's you and Ricky Sack, whether it's whoever sitting around the table, yeah. every Spurs fan sits there around that table and goes, yes, y- yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, solid signings. We won't do that. I'm not being doom and gloom. We've already signed (laughs) Werner. So can I get your opinion on something, actually? Because you just made a great point there, right? And we're going on to transfer rumours now. And the biggest rumour that came out yesterday is that we've agreed um, personal terms with Tony. It's now just a fee. Apparently, right? Mm -hmm. This is all hypothetically and apparently. Yeah, yeah. we love this game. Yeah, you've said just there, right? Um... If all of us could sit around the table, all Spurs fans, all of us would sit around the table and say, I don't think one Spurs fan will say no to Eze. Mm. But Tony seems to be splitting the fan base. Now, for me... That right, doesn't sound like the Tottenham fan base at all, does yeah. it? Now, it seems to be, not his footballing ability, it's more to do with what goes off of the pitch. And my, mm. my thing is, with that is, if Ange says, actually, I can cope with all that, for me personally, where Tottenham are sitting right now, I would sign him. A year ago, I probably would have been a bit iffy. Yeah. But right now, I'm like, I know what Tottenham are like. I've just seen us put Werner through the door, which worries me, right? So actually, Tony's a big improvement on that. Whether he's the improvement, I think, because obviously there's no, with this sign-in, there's no sell-on clause. There's no, there's, it's not going to be a typical Tottenham Daniel Levy kind of signing. It will be, we want your goals, and that's, we want you to push us forward, which for me is kind of strange that Spurs are going to try and do this. Yeah. How do you sit on the Tony situation? Look, Ivan Tony, again, let, let's set aside off the field matters yeah. and personality and all of that. Let's set that aside for one minute. Ivan Tony, the striker, pre suspension, yes, 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 and more yes. Yeah. Now I'm going to add that baggage back in. Yep. <laughs> Since the suspension, and again, he's had he had nearly a year out, so I get it. He didn't look as sharp. He wasn't scoring as many goals. No, but, because I think he got four towards the, four Premier League goals by the yeah. end. But again, is that because of the team he was playing in? Is that because of the suspension and the lack of game time? Look, Ivan Tony for me. Look, I, I, I don't go overboard about him. Don't get me wrong. No. I don't sit here and go, "Oh my God, this is the second coming of Jurgen Klinsmann." <laughs> He's, he's a good striker. Yeah. I think he's a good striker that people think is better than he is because there's not many strikers out there. Right? Uh, yeah, I can, I can get on board with that, yeah. Because I think that's yeah. where I'm sitting with him, yeah. When we were growing up, right, you, if you looked at the Premier League goal scoring charts when we were growing up, you had Alan Shearer, Ian Wright, Les Ferdinand, Andy Cole, Dwight York, Chris Sutton, um, Robbie Fowler... And, and, and then you started to chuck in the, in the mix of the people like the Zolas, the Vialis, the Vanishers. He's not on par with any of those strikers I just mentioned. No, um, no. That, that shows you the, where the quality... But, but football yeah. has changed because that, that's 4-4-2. Of course. Seasons, of course. Then. Yeah. Look, l- l- let me look at it from this point of view. He's better than what we've got up front. Yeah. Right? That's why, how I'm looking at it. Yeah. Right. 
So my, my question is this, for all the rumours yesterday that what we offered 45 and they want 65, 70, whatever it is, if Spurs truly want him, and if he is our number one striker target, Marlon, I expect Tottenham Hotspur to, for once to be a big club and in within a week go, bang, there's your 65 million, right? Get him in, get him in, so that the moment... The moment he finishes with England in um, in Germany, he can have his two-week holiday and he's back with the Spurs team, ready for the beginning of pre-season. None of this getting him in on transfer deadline day, messing about during the pre-season. If that is your guy, get yeah. him in. But if that is your guy and you want him in, he is fantastic in the air. We don't have a single winger that can cross a football in the air. Yeah, see, that was my only worry with him. That is my only worry that right. yeah, if like we, we don't that we don't cross it because Richarlison, to be fair to him, is like I get it. He's he's better in the air than he is with his feet, right? Agreed. Right, and most of the goals that he ended up scoring last season were with his feet because yeah. Johnson was <laughs> no literally there across the box. Yeah, no <laughs> one no one was crossing it to him. And yeah, I think he scored one header against Nottingham Forest, which I can remember. But yeah. it's no good if no one that and Kulisewski puts one cross in per every six matches. Yeah, so yeah, we, yeah. we've kind of got an issue there. But what I wanted to quickly move on to is we were linked to Winston McKenney this morning. <laughs> now, for me, I went, that's Paratici straight away, right? Because Paratici signed him at Juve, right? But right. we've seen him go to Leeds, we've seen him go online, and he hasn't really set the world alight. Why would we be looking at Winston McKenney right now? <laughs> oh, God, if I talk, I'm going to get in trouble. Um, <laughs> look, when you say you saw that link and you thought, that's Paratici. Yeah. I saw that link and I thought, that is Tottenham Hotspur all over, right? Yeah. This is this is the proverbial average midfielder that Tottenham sign, that half the fan base will start making a campaign for him to be much better than he is, right? Yeah. When in theory, he's an average footballer that works hard. We've got average footballers that work hard already. We've got loads of them. We've got Hoiberg. We've got Skip, we've got Basuma, we've got Benton. All of these are, are footballers that work hard. Yeah. I'm not saying Benton is average, but Benton for me is very in and out. But that's another story. I'll ask you this question, Marlon, off the back of it before we continue to talk about Weston McKenney. What do Spurs want to be? What's the aim? Because. Look, See, you're asking me that question, right? And I, I'm looking at it going. I don't know. I thought I did know, right? Yeah. I saw Ange and his plan, right? And I saw everything that they were trying to do. All of a sudden, all these transfer rooms, and I know they're rumours, right? But the fact that Werner came back. Yeah. It I'm looking it at it going... think that anything, anything is possible, right? The fact that yeah. they saw Timo Werner and said, we need him for another 12 months, makes me think that no one at this club has a clue. Yeah, no, this, is, what, this was my problem. And I was talking the other day, right? And... For me, I came out and said, right, Sonny can stay, but we need Sonny's replacement in today because he's another year older. Yep. You have seen the decline. No matter how, how many goals he scores, you have seen the decline. Yep. Right. So go get Sonny's replacement in now. So yep. they've got a year with Sonny at least. Right. Yep. Like Richarlison did with Kane. Right. And it kind of did work out, if we, no matter how we want to put it. It kind of worked out because we saw what he, when Sonny went off. Richardson did kind of step up, not in the way we wanted, but he did show yeah, us yeah. a bit more than he had showed us, right? So my point was, I wanted a new front three, and I was being argued against because they were going, but no, you keep Sonny on the left and this, that, and the other. Look how many goals he scored last year. But then I then said, but if you look at his goals from left wing compared to him as a striker, he only scored four from left wing. That's not good enough for us. <laughs> and his assists were, were, were only four. So if you're expecting him to be left wing and Werner is his backup, Werner's going to play. <laughs> which is worrying. Look, I, I, think, I think you're spot on. And, and again, this is where I think so many football fans look at football in black and white, right? Yeah. I think sometimes you've got to look at the grey area. And the grey area for me, and what you were just talking about there, is succession planning, yeah. right? Is what these bigger clubs do is they realise that a, a son is getting older. This isn't me knocking son. This is natural. Age is, age is not me having a pop at him. It's a natural thing. He's a player that relies... Listen, Hongmin Sun isn't, for me, gifted with his feet in terms of hold-up play, link-up play, passing. Sonny has always been a very dynamic, 
quick, direct footballer who wants to get the ball out of his feet, beat a man or cut in and whip one in the top corner. When that starts to go, very few footballers can adapt. Yeah. Now, I'm going to take it to the extreme. For example, when Messi, <laughs> taking it to the extreme, when Messi <laughs> started to lose that pace, so to speak, Lionel Messi is the best footballer in the world with the ball at his feet. Oh, so yes. Can, I'll just drop into midfield and dictate games, right? Son well, Ronaldo isn't... technically did the same as well. Cristiano Ronaldo did the same. He went from like a winger and he moved more centrally because he just couldn't, couldn't do, do the it, running. Right. Yeah. So, so for me, Son, I think you're going to get another good year out of him. A good, yeah. I think a good year. I think he is declining. Um, and again, just before anyone watches, I'm not knocking him. It for me, he's given us so many good years oh, yeah. that I think now you're starting to see that he he not. I don't want to say he's burnt out, but there must become a point where you've been. He doing looked it last season. He yeah. did look it towards the end because I, I and as I pointed out, right, because someone said that he hasn't got no tournaments, that doesn't matter because he's still going off to play for South Korea, and I'm not expecting him to retire from international football. He is their god. Right, yeah. he's yeah. got to go and play for. He's he's the captain. He's everything, right? But that doesn't have an impact on an older person. It always does, right? You saw when Skulls retired, right? How he rolled back the years and he was able to play longer. Vardy is exactly the same. When he retired and he weren't going away with England, this is yeah, yeah. He's still playing now. And yeah, the Suns playing every god given yeah. minute for Korea. Yeah. And you think and these, these are these are long flights as well. Yeah. Look. So just, just to clarify, because I know people will watch this and say Sava wants to get rid of Sun. It's not what nope. I said. Sonny, for me, needs to go back to the left wing this season. Yep. right? But like you said, Marlon, I'm in 100% agreement. We should have been buying that young, up-and-coming left winger that we... It doesn't, I'm sorry, it doesn't have to be 18 or 19, but a younger, right. up-and-coming left winger that we think this is going to be the successor. And then this year should have been Sun and that player rotating during cup games, European games. But what we've done is we've wasted that by giving Timo Werner a year long. So which means that none of the youth team will get in on that position. Well, this, and we want someone else to cover that position. Yeah, this was the question because with Werner, does that now mean someone like Mikey Moore, does that mean now that he's not going to get, he's going to get less minutes because actually you've got Werner as the third highest paid player at Spurs. And it's just kind of madness to think, that's where Spurs are at, and that's why that's why I was coming to what come to what you said earlier. I just don't know what direction we are, are currently right. going in at the moment. And yeah. I think that's the bit for me where I'm like, I thought I did, but you've kind of confused me. So for me, until September the first, now I'm just gonna before I start having my meltdown, <laughs> I, I, I'll literally like wait until that, that moment. Yeah, and the reason I ask you that is, I think if you ask most Spurs fans, what do Spurs want to be? What are we trying to get to? unless you get really wishy-washy, toxic, positive answers, I don't think anyone actually knows. And what I mean by this is, fine, sign Werner. Fine. Fine. Sign a Weston McKenney, a Carl Walker-Peters, a Mark said, fine, sign these players. If fifth is the best you ever want to do. If you want to be involved in that fifth to eighth battle every season, fine, sign these players. But let if the manager want, come out and say it, though. Don't let him say, I'm trying to do this and fight for right. top four because it just puts our, a lot of our backs up straight exactly. away. <laughs> but you've got the manager coming out saying, I don't want this. I don't want fourth. I don't want third. I want to go for this. Cool. All right. Now, I'm not expecting Spurs to be in a title race, by the way. But what I what I expect to see from any club that has... Look, we've moved stadium for this reason, to compete. I kept, I kept hearing, we can't compete in the old stadium. But the, the signings are getting worse and worse worse and worse since we moved. I used to get excited, Marlon, at the likes of... I'm just going to chuck a couple of names out, right? Back in the day, we'd sign a Robbie Keane and you'd go, oh, that excites me. We'd sign Jermaine Defoe, right? I, I remember where I was when we signed Edgar Davids and I was listening to... A, I, was, I, was, I, was in a, I was watching someone play football. I can't remember exactly who I was watching play football, but I was watching some non-league football... There was a bunch of our Spurs fans, and we just heard the rumor that Edgar Davis was signing. We were all around this guy. This guy had a radio, was listening to Talk Sport, waiting for the confirmation. That's how excited we were. Yeah, and yeah. Edgar Davis was aging. <laughs> and that was my yo. Well, you look at it, the likes of, and by the way, these weren't world class players. 
No. But, but they were exciting. You, you, you look, even when we signed Nico Cranchar from Portsmouth, I was like, yeah, good footballer. Really yeah. good. For, and obviously all the jokes with Harry and Triffick. And, yeah. But Nico Cranchar, really good footballer. We signed Wilson Palacios that you went, yeah, that's what we need at the time. Yeah. Now I'm seeing Valises, Solomons, Brennan Johnsons, Gills, Verners. And I'm thinking to myself, this is what we're doing every window. So what I get a lot of, for the people that, that don't like my opinions, what I get a lot of, and I'm going to hear this all window, Marlon, is the window's not shut yet. Uh, if I had a pound for every time I've heard that in the last 25 years, the window's not shut. My worry, Marlon, is Spurs don't ever go out and make that statement. Like, we haven't done for years, yeah. Next like, week, yeah. if I said to you, Marlon, next week, Next Friday, I don't know, any day, next Friday, Spurs announced the double signing of Eze and Tony, right? Suddenly, don't you as a fan base get a bit of a lift? Don't, don't you get a bit of a lift and go... That's oh. how we, we, we'll be talking about titles. <laughs> Again. <laughs> we'll be back to where we were after 10 games. <laughs> right. But, but, but the thing is... But it gives, it's it, the belief, it yeah. Give, as a fan, I want to be excited. And... The signings, like, I, I, I get it, right? Like, listen, I don't care. I'll call out any you, not by name, but I'll call out the YouTube people. I'm bored of seeing people pretend, <laughs> right? I'm bored of seeing all these toxic, positive YouTube presenters pretend. Like, when we sign a Timo Werner and they're going, oh, no, we get it. It's only a year's loan and all these other fans are terrible for thinking it's bad. Come on. If you love Tottenham Hotspur, you don't want Timo Werner at your football club, right? If you, if you truly want Spurs to do better... You don't celebrate the signing of Timo Werner. You don't go into, oh, but he's only on a year's loan and he's free. There's no excuses. So if we then add Weston McKenney to that, I, I know we haven't, hypothetical, hypothetical I'll be, yeah. I won't even be livid with it, Marlon. It's what I expect from Tottenham now. Yeah, no, and I, I completely agree. I, I personally, and when I saw the rumour this morning, I think it's down to, obviously, Real's leaving. And I think they're looking at Weston McKinney to play right back as a backup to Poro. Even though he's an attacking player, I reckon that's what they're looking at. I don't doubt um, it. And, that, and that's where Spurs are at. Because like, I want to just give you a rumour today that's come out from Chelsea. They're trying to sign like a Penda, right? <laughs> yeah. A, prop, <laughs> like, a proper good player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A proper, yeah. A proper striker. Like, even for Belgium the other night, like, you saw how good he was. Right, yeah. and you could actually go. Actually, I can see he's yeah. actually a very decent player. He's not just what everyone's talking about in Europe, right? But if Chelsea went out and signed him and probably signed a goalkeeper, right? I know Maresca's new. It's unfortunate. It's not Poch because I think Chelsea were going on the up. They 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 lost two of their last twenty games in all competitions, yep. and that was Man City and Arsenal. Yeah, but, and the and the Arsenal one kind of paper though. Like everyone forgot about how well Chelsea were doing, especially towards the end. Because they got smashed by Arsenal. But yeah. actually, when you looked at two, they lost two games and you're like, wow. <laughs> I I think that the difference is we can all... Look, I, I don't. I'm not one of these fans who laughs at a Chelsea when they do badly. right? I don't laugh at a Liverpool when they crumble or a Man United because they're all still much better than us. And I don't yeah. mean... And what, I, what I mean is, Mark, I don't mean in the one season they're better than us. I mean in... in, in in the holistic way of looking at this, over a five, ten year period, these clubs are better than us. These clubs win trophies. Chelsea have had a bit of a blip, right? Chelsea, new owners coming in, finding their feet, getting a lot of things wrong. The new owner, the, the new owner is that experienced in life. He's not going to worry about that. The new owner is going to be like, all right, we've made some mistakes, but you know what? Let's do this now. Yep. My point in saying this is no matter how much the likes of Chelsea and Man United have had a dip, they will still attempt to buy better footballers than what Tottenham Hotspur try and sign. And yeah, especially Man United. Yeah, yeah. Man United, Man, apart from the links with Gareth Southgate, since the new guys come in, everything else has been, I know it's been quite quiet on their front, but the whole, just you can see what they're trying to do, right? They want to be the Wembley of the North and stuff. They, they want to be the best. And actually, they're not. They, they're kind of saying, all right, Man United off the pitch was a bit of a mess, but Man United on it needs to be better. If Man United are, are better on the pitch, it means more revenue for them. And this is the bit I don't get with the whole FFP stuff because people will say, all right, and this is where I'm looking at it, right? People say building a hotel and having long-term revenue is more important. But actually, players 
and the fees you can get for them, and if they're top of their game, that's quick revenue. Yeah, right? yeah. So, and it's kind of the weirdest scenario that the Premier League have gone down this route when actually your biggest asset, right, and the income that you bring in is from your youth academy and the players on the pitch, right? Yeah. And this is the bit that I don't get because, and the worst bit about it is about FFP is how you can get all the money up front for a youth team player, right, who you should be developing, but actually you're going to sell them off quicker now to develop someone overseas for 40 million. And a prime example of this is Everton, right? And the reason why I use Everton is Sims, right? They have to sell Sims to Coventry to bring in all the money so they could go and get in Beto, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason why I use those two as a prime example is because they're very similar players, but it's what's wrong, what's so wrong with FFP, the fact you can have yeah, yeah, yeah. on a long term and actually had to go sell Sims. And actually they could have just kept Sims, right? It's, it's free. Them, so. Yeah, it's free when money. I say when I say it's free money, obviously there's been yeah. years that's gone into developing these youngsters, whatever. But but in, in in the grand scheme of football money, it's free money. So for example, if you look at Jared Brantwaite, right at Everton, mm -hmm. Jared Brantwaite, very good defense. Don't get me wrong, young, got mistakes in him. Of course, I would expect that at that age. But you can see sometimes you can just look at a player and say, yeah, you're going to be a top centre half. Man United are going to sign this guy. Now, whether they sign him for 60, 70 million, fans will go, oh my God, what a waste of money. You're buying a 20-year-old English centre-half, yeah, and the reason I say English is for homegrown, who's got experience in the Premier League, now got experience international level, and he does you for the next five, six, seven, eight seasons, if you play it rightly. Yeah. But then forever, and what they've done is they've nurtured this guy through to the first team. He's had a year's worth of games, and then they've gone, all right, there's 60, 70 million pound profit. But if we lay if we link this back to Spurs, I want to see Spurs doing that. I'm not saying I'm not saying Brantwaite. I'm not saying Brantwaite um uh, per se. But yeah, but we sort of quality, go yeah. These clubs and going, hang on. Hang on, this this boy is really good. He's in the England setup now. He's done. We should be going and getting a, a player like that, even if it's a, a Gwehi, yeah. If it's a Gallagher, if it's a a Jared Bowen, we don't do that. We we don't do it. What we're doing at the moment, how many of our signings, Marlon, are in that fifteen to twenty million bracket for average players? Oh, mate, it's, it's all the time. You're right? Solomon was a free, yeah. free, yeah. yeah. Valise was about 15, 12 million, whatever he was, unknown kid from Argentina. Ashley Phillips was 3 million from Blackburn, can't get a minute to save his life, even when we've got a centre-back injury crisis. Um, they're, they're looking at Weston McKenney at 15 million pounds. Yeah? It's it's just... It feels like it's... Even even Dragusin, who's a good player, right? 25 million. It's sort of like, if you keep shopping in there... Yeah. You keep shopping in that bracket, you end up being that bracket of a football club. Now, and that's where we are. If we're being completely honest, that's where we are. Absolutely, but let me caveat. I have to caveat because I know what people will say in the comments. I'm not saying every signing has to be seventy million. No, 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 no. It's the quality more than anything else. Sprinkle, sprinkle the playing squad with some pure class. Sprinkle it with some class. I don't know what's happened there. <laughs> Sun's come out. <laughs> I, was like, I don't know what happened there, mate. I just suddenly looked like I was an angel floating away. Yeah, or, or you're, probably, you're probably about to say something that uh, is correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so for me, when we're talking about Tottenham and transfer rumours, do I buy into all of these? No. But the worrying thing for me is everyone we're linked with is very, very painfully average. And what's more worrying is that a, a, a huge portion of our fan base keep trying to find excuses and reasons as to why that would be a good signing. And I'm sorry, no matter what we do this window, my, I will always remember that the first bit of business we did this summer was signing Timo Werner for 165 grand a week to block, to block the pathway of Sunsot Bell, Santiago, Mikey Moore, um, uh, I'm missing a few up front. Lancashire, Donnelly, right? I would rather 
they turn around and said, you know what, Jude, just, just for example, Jude Sunsop Bell, we're going to have him rather than go and loan Timo Werner, right? Which then allows you, he, he could be in the squad as a kid, right? Then allows you to go and spend that money that we spent on his wages elsewhere. But we did the easy thing. We did the really easy, bad, just, sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flow now, Marlon. <laughs> Want to know what annoyed me just before we move on to Euro 2024? Yeah. Fact of all this is that Spurs implemented Johan Lang, Rob McKenzie, uh, Paratici's there, Scott Mum, uh, Postacoglu, who we were told has got this brilliant knowledge of the Asian market and will bring in yeah. all these unknown oh. superstars. And between them, they've signed Timo Werner twice. I give and Drake and Sheen, I give them. I give him Draggy Sheen. The only reason I'm going to give him Draggy Sheen, but even then, it's not really someone they've gone out. That is Paratici signing him again, just using these old contacts. So they haven't really gone out and actually thought of someone new. Yeah. <laughs> someone who's going to take take the club forward. So this is going to be the interesting part over this summer to see, because they haven't done anything. Like, you're right. I actually do agree. They haven't really done anything. Done they've nothing. literally done nothing. They've, um, they've, they've relied they've on what we've got. On. Yeah. And it's they, not they've like... had a year. I was expecting when this window opens, you've got when I say expecting Poster Coglu himself. Again, this isn't this isn't Richard Sava or Marlon saying that. I don't know, <laughs> use my first name. This isn't Sava or Marlon making this up. Poster Coglu said he wants to get a lot of signings done before the Euros start or in place. Right? And all we've seen so far is Timo Werner on loan. And I don't care, I don't care how anybody plays this out it's a, tr- a, 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 a terrible terrible signing it's a horrible signing that none of the clubs around us would make and we any fan that settles for that i'll say it they'll hate me for it they've got what they deserve you don't deserve anymore if, if you if you agree with that you don't deserve anymore sorry bring on the hate i don't care <laughs> i want to go on to euro 2024 but i wanted to talk about quickly uh, quite a funny clip um, regarding an Arsenal target, Amadou right. Onana, who is a ta- he's come out as an Arsenal target this morning, but was called Andre like, yesterday, and it was the way he dropped from. I'm pretty sure he was speaking French um, at the time uh, to a journalist, and he literally dropped into this Cockney accent. I'm not Andre, mate, <laughs> right? But him as a player, if what would you take him at Spurs, and where do you see him fitting into Arsenal? If because he's been strongly linked with Arsenal. Um. Look, I I don't mind Anana. I, I think he, I think he's a good player. Again, I'll take it back to that question: What do Spurs want to be? Yeah. If if you want to elevate yourselves, is he that guy? I don't know. Probably, could be. Could be. Probably not. In the way the way that we, like to be fair, we've probably got three midfielders that are very similar to him, hmm. and that's Benson, Kuzma, and Sa. The, <laughs> the difference is for for me, uh, Marlon. I don't really rate any of our central midfielders. I don't, I don't think any of them really do anything. I think we've got very safe central midfielders. Yeah, I agree. That, that. that are never terrible, but never really do anything. I, I don't see enough skill set between them to. I get what you mean. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I kind of look. I'm, I'm a big fan of Benz and Core, and I feel like we can get more out of him. But I feel like he hasn't got a central midfielder next to him to help him do do what he can do because we've seen parts of it under Conte, and I mean, I don't know what he parts. is. And that's the problem. And that's the problem we've got at the moment. We don't know what it is because is he a number? I don't like using number. Is he a DM? I'm going to use my my old fashioned. Is yeah, he a DM? Is he, yeah. Is he a CM? Or is he meant to be an attacking mid? That's the bit I don't know at the moment with him. Um, with Basuma, and I've said this since we got him, and even when he was playing well, I've said he's been playing. He does. It's not the position he played for Brighton. So why the hell are we expecting him to play yeah. exactly how he did at Brighton? Right? I want to see him probably six months in his position before I go, mm, you know what, that's not working yeah, yeah. out. And so, look, Sar's developing, but it's a case of, I don't know what more we're going to get out of Sar apart from his energy. There's certain bits and pieces I can see him progressing. Yeah. But again, is he going to take I, us to that next step? I don't know. I think he's <laughs> another one that's, but listen, I, I don't mind Sar. Yeah. I don't mind him, but he's another one that I look at and I think, what, what are you? Don't get me wrong, fantastic energy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's got those, those big, long legs that stride around the pitch and get all over the park. But I'll ask, is he that good on the ball? 
Is he defensive? Is he creative? Is he the, 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 the guy that keeps you ticking over? And again, I'll put that to Saar. I'll put that to Basuma, to Bentoncourt, to Hoiberg, to Lascelles. I look at all of our midfielders and I just think we have accumulated this midfield bunch over the last five years. Yeah. And I just don't think, I don't think any one of them stands out at all. I don't think any one of them commands a great big fee in the market. And I don't, I don't think any one of them, like to use your analogy, is a specialised DM mm. or an attacking midfielder. I think they're all central midfielders that don't really do a lot. And, and unfortunately, you, you don't compete with that. And you, can, and, and actually, you can use Euro to twenty twenty four as a prime example. You've seen some good quality midfield. Like everyone's had one game now, right? And I just wanted to quickly. This is the last bit that we're going to talk about. Just so we quickly want to get a couple of things from you. Now that you've seen everyone play. Right. Who are your favourites now? Right. And where it how how it how will England fare in the next couple of games now that they that they've got left? Has your Let opinion me, changed since the tournament started, basically? Can I answer that backwards? Can I do the England yes. bit first? Um, England will be absolutely fine in the next two games because England yeah, have been given the easiest group known to mankind. So I don't really ever think England can be judged in the first three games. I still stand by what I've said about England for the last however old I am, 40 years. The moment we play a top nation, we will yeah. be knocked out. Right? We will. Spurs, isn't it? England and Spurs are quite similar in that sense. Just England, play a top six side, we go out. <laughs> England fans are like Spurs fans. It's all hope, no reality. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I see England get talked about as having this amazing squad, this best squad. I'll take the Euro 96 squad. I'll take the 98 squad. I'll take the World Cup 90 squad. I'll take... This squad isn't that special. Anyway, England will be fine. It, it's all about who England get in the last 16, last eight, right? That's that's what it's all about. Um, my favourite, listen, I've been really, really impressed with, I, I thought Spain are very good. I, I, I thought I say, they were good, but I think they peaked too early. That's my only worry with them. I think with Spain, I think what they've got is, what I love about Spain is they have an identity. No matter which player you drop into that 11, they know the identity they play. They know they're going to base the game around Rodri in midfield, like Man City do, and everybody else knows their job. Uh, Spain, for me, the one thing that might stop them winning it for me is do they have enough goal power? But this has been said of Spain before and they've gone on to win tournaments. Of course. So Spain, I think, are very good. Germany are... Look, I think nobody talked about Germany coming into this tournament, which is crazy. They've had a couple of bad years, but now you look at that squad, right? you look at the players coming. This is why when people talk about the England squad, they've got players like Fulkrog, Leroy Sane, Muller. These are the players coming off the bench for them. We've got players like (laughs) Conor Gallagher and Jared Owen coming off the bench for us. So... I think Germany, being at home as well, have to be one of the favourites. France are oh, France. France are a well-drilled, well-oiled unit. And you know, you know what I noticed watching them the other night? And it wasn't even their best game. The pace, the power, the directness, the energy compared France to England. Everything they do is powerful all over the pitch. Big, strong players. Even Kante, who's about three foot tall. <laughs> oh, powerful, right? Can, can we sign um, <laughs> I, I, I'd have to say it would be, for me, between France, Spain and Germany. Um, I know it's easy to say that, but uh, I just want a, a shout out to Austria, who I thought were excellent. And the two midfielders, uh, is it Borgautma or B- Bam Gautner yeah. and Brad Lehmer, Wow. Wow. What watching those midfielders play, I go, that's a midfielder. That's that's a midfielder. The the, the Turkish yesterday, some great football they oh. played. Oh, the, the Real Madrid guy that um I forgot his oh, name now. But yeah, what a like you when you say Real Madrid have signed a decent player, he's it's a bit like Odegaard with me. Odegaard was always good. It was just a mm. case of he just needed the right fit and that's what Arteta's done for him. Yeah. So but Sava <laughs> Thank you very much for joining me today on the on the Pitch Podcast episode three. Um, nice. There is 
uh, are going to be a episode with Ash tonight on the Rivals. So make sure you check that out on the pitch as well, streaming tonight. And make sure you tune in tomorrow at one o'clock for episode four. Um, I'm not sure if he's hosting it yet, but we'll, you'll soon see it. Just make sure you hit that notification bell. Make sure you hit the like. Make sure you share. But as always, thank you very much, Sabah. As always, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you for this last hour. And I'm glad pe- people are glad to see you actually being on this as a guest. <laughs> Can I just make that clear, Marlon? I get yeah. a lot of people saying Savas back. Yeah. No. I'm, I'm guesting a couple of times on, on uploads. I'm, no, we're, not my channel. Yeah. I'm not we're just making him to come on as a guest. <laughs> we still need him as a guest because his opinions are still yeah. valid. And this is the thing. But Sava, thank you very Thanks, much. Man. And as always, please like, subscribe, and comment. <laughs>